I was going through my email this morning. It's the 12th of April, 2011. And I saw an email from, from the Learning Network that talked about Cisco Learning Labs are now available for purchase. So I looked in further and I saw that these are actually Cisco iOS software on Unix that they're setting up to provide this service to us. This, my friends, is one of the biggest game changers for the benefit of Cisco learners, people who really want to learn Cisco from the ground up. The probably the biggest change has happened in the last decade. Now, I've had the opportunity to work with CCA training companies and Cisco learning partners, and one of the challenges has always been hands-on, hands-on, hands-on. And one of the challenges for rack vendors is, well, if we give a rack, we have to rent it out for like four or six or eight hours. Is a student really at the CCNA level going to be working on the rack for four hours straight? The answer is no. They're going to be working on the rack for maybe 10 minutes in a little study and 20 minutes in a little study and 30 minutes in a little study. They're not going to be working for four or six, eight hours straight on the command line interface. So the solution that these labs bring to the table, which I absolutely love, is the ability to stop the clock. Here's one of the labs. Take a look at the clock right here. We have 20 hours and 25 minutes left. So just remember 20 hours, 25 minutes. Let's say I'm working on a lab and I think, oh my gosh, I need to revisit my learning regarding OSPF neighbors and what's required. The network has to match, the area has to match, the length of the mask has to match, the flags have to match, et cetera, et cetera. Authentication has to match. I need to stop and I need to go study. So what we could do is, is 20 hours and 25 minutes left of my rack time. I could just click on exit. Remember that number, 20 hours, 25 minutes left. And let's say I pause it, I log out, and I go to dinner. Uh, maybe I'm going to sleep. Maybe I'm going on a business trip. Maybe I'm whatever, work calls. So I'm busy for the next two or three days. I come back, check this out. When I come back, when I resume this lab implementing OSPF, which is where we were, Take a look at the clock. So I'm logged on as Keith Barker at Nova Datacom. That's all great. Here's the lab I'm working on. If I click on Resume Lab, in the background, they're loading everything that I left. I'd want to save my configs just to be safe. They're loading back everything I left. And take a look at the clock. 20 hours, 25 minutes still. In fact, I think they fudge it a little bit and give you like 30 extra seconds just to make sure everything has a chance to load and so forth. I wasted no time. So a 25 hours of real practice time where you can pause it anytime you want to, that's a huge, huge benefit. Now, secondly, <clears throat> once we load these labs up, it has an overview of all the tasks, including the topology, which we're now looking at. And also it has the switch commands, the router commands to pull it off, the job aids, which are going to identify what the IP addresses should be, what the subnet masks should be, what VLANs are supposed to be where, just to make sure you can implement the network that they're asking you to. And then there's an answer key. So at the very end of the day, you can say, okay, great. I did all this work. Let me go compare against what they were asking me to do and make sure I got the matching results. If I want to see all the tasks on one page, I could click on this tab to the right, all questions, and it would simply show me all the tasks in one document instead of multiple pop-ups. Background info is just an overview of the lab that you're working on. Managed devices lets you power cycle devices. So for example, I'll bring up that window here. And let's say I want to reboot R3. In fact, let me show you how easy it is. I want to go to R3. I simply click on R3 opens up a console port, and I'm there. So if I type in who, it's going to show me the asterisk is where I'm connected to. I'm on line console zero. I am on the console of R3. If I wanted to reboot R3, let's say I had an issue or I just wanted to start over, I could go to the manage devices, and I could say, OK, R3, I want to reload the initial configuration. Start from scratch with that guy, or power cycle it. Or if some, for some reason the, the line the, the line console was clogged up or taken or somehow I opened up a session already to it through another window and I was trying to open up a second session, I could clear the console as well. So if I want to power cycle it, we'll power cycle that switch one. So I'll say no. I don't want to do that. Let's power cycles R3. I'll say yes. And we'll go back to R3. And if you'll notice on R3, he is in the process of a beautiful reboot. So he's booting up and press return to get started. We all recognize that. And there's all the interfaces status and it's up. What's the negative of that? Well, it only took like 30 seconds compared to three or four minutes for a real router, depending on your model, to boot up. So here on the router, if we want to verify, for example, I'll scroll over a little bit so you can see everything. 
So here we're in R3, and this is an OSPF lab. So we could do just all the normal iOS commands. I mean, it is iOS, happens to be running on Unix. Show IP interface brief. Sure enough, there's our interfaces. Are we running any dynamic routing protocols? Show IP protocols to see. And sure enough, we're running OSPF. We've learned information from these two devices, which are OSPF buddies. We could verify that with show IP OSPF neighbors. And I can also verify which interfaces are running OSPF. Show IP OSPF interface brief. Just like that. So all the commands that we'd normally have, and check this out. One of the things that's been lacking has been the actual switch work inside of uh, simulators, especially GNS3. So if you want to go mess with the switch, we simply click on the switch, opens up a console port for that switch. And also, the, because we're on the console, any authentication we change on the console will be reflected. So if you require a password or no password or whatever you configure, you're going to get. So we do a show VLAN brief. That's a good example. And it's going to show us the VLANs that exist, config T, VTP mode server, VTP domain NDC, and uh, do show VTP status. I mean, it is just wonderful. So spanning tree and everything else. Show spanning tree. That'll show us for VLAN 1 at least. And there's our spanning tree information. So it's a great opportunity to practice on routers and switches and only get charged, if you will, for the minutes that you're actually using it. So we could save our configs with copy run to start or the legacy command of write, which is a shortcut for copy run to start, and we're good to go. And so I would recommend saving your changes. And when you want to exit out, you simply click on exit and you're back to the main menu and the clock is no longer being counted against you. So thanks for watching. iOS on Unix is a very exciting option now available to the public. Uh, to actually get more information on it, order it, you go to Cisco's website at learningnetwork.cisco.com, and then you can simply click on the link that says store, which is right here, our store, and then you can lead to the products called the Cisco Learning Labs. Thanks, everybody, and have a great, great day.